you will actually be able to right now at this very second buy one of my NFTs. Hey, how's it going guys? Daniel here, aka Hashlips, and welcome back to this full ultimate A to Z minting dap thousand NFTs on OpenSea on the Polygon network. It's a mouthful. But you might be asking me the question, well, Daniel, you've already done these tutorials before. And yes, I have. For those of you who had so many questions, I realized that there was a disconnect on how to complete the whole journey. And that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this from start, inception to finish. This is not only just a tutorial, but this is actually going to be an NFT series that I'm going to personally put on the blockchain, specifically the Polygon blockchain, which you guys can actually go and grab for yourselves. I might mint only a, a thousand of these NFTs, which is going to be so rare because of the fact that this is the program that started it all. I've coded this program from scratch and you guys have followed the journey with me. And now I'm going to implement this and dedicate this nerd um, series and um, this NFT to you guys and to the community. And I hope that it's accepted well in the way that people love code as much as I do and they want to go and get one of these. The whole purpose and the look and feel of these NFTs, I went for a textbook drawing color book feel where it looks like someone took a Sharpie uh, marker and actually drew out a character, added some dark features and maybe attributes such as the headset, the glasses, and then went ahead and colored in the t-shirt. I will have a lot of elements to come, but I really want to explain what I've done to get the base going. And this is usually how I um, kind of start my projects. I start off with a base character or an image or an art idea, and I draw it out in different layers. Now the layers on Photoshop here on the right hand side is very important, the way they are structured, and I'll go through them in a second. I just want to take a pause and a brief moment to thank everyone who's been a part of this journey from the start. As you know, we all started with the Generative Art Node project and it's been blowing up. I even see other YouTubers using it and giving advice on how to code these. Thank you for the YouTubers who've actually mentioned my channel and for the guys who's not mentioning my channel, um, please do. <laughs> I really appreciate that because we put so much effort into our work. Anyway, for, for the channel um, that we are now focusing on here and the A to Z tutorial and for this specific series, we will be focusing on the Generative Art open source repo. We would specifically be focusing on the branch V3, the one that everyone has questions about. I'm going to show you how to exactly implement it and to get you started to create this um, NFT programmatic, programmatic series. <laughs> and it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be super cool. Lastly, I want to thank the person who has sent me this NFT. It's called the Trippin. A cat and I just noticed this cat a few days ago in my wallet and I just want to say thank you because this is truly showing that the community wants me to see their projects as well so feel free to drop your NFT in my wallet I love looking at them and I'll definitely show them off in the videos so thank you so much for this NFT if you the person who sent it to me and you're watching this video drop a comment and I'll get back to you because I really want to personally thank you as well Let's now look at Photoshop. Now, Photoshop is a great image manipulation tool to use, especially if you want to create very intricate artworks. I chose Photoshop because I've always used it, but you can use any photo manipulation software that you use or want to use. Um, for instance, you can use GIMP. It's also a great alternative, but I'm using Photoshop. Each one of these photo manipulating softwares usually gives you the option to work in layers. And that's exactly what you need to start off the minting process or the creation process, as I would say, for your NFTs and your artworks. How I started the series off 
was I created a base shape, a base image. And this base image you can see represents a figure. I'm going to refer to this um, character as a it, a figure, an alienated creature, because this is not a human character. And the reason why it is, is because of the big head. I wanted to have weird looking features like these dark eyes. And we'll see how we can expand on that idea a bit later. But in all essence, uh, you start off with this shape. And uh, you can line draw it or you can do your own artworks. The most important part of this shape is so that you know where all your assets is going to live. So this will become your base kind of um, to work from. Your reference, your plan, your, right? So your blueprint. Next, you want to style um, and actually decide on your style first. But you want to create your layers exactly in the order that the program would mint them. So we want the base to be rendered first. Next, we want something to render on top of the base and I decided for it to be the t-shirt. The reason why I decided the t-shirt should be rendered next and uh, not last is because let's say this creature, this character had a tongue that sticks out. So we're going to draw this, this quick tongue over there. Let's say this creature had this tongue sticking out. Then you'll see the tongue can actually go over the character's shirt. And that's exactly what we want. We want layers to overlap and actually make sense. That's why after the t-shirt, I got the t-shirt logo, which in this case says Coda, as spelled with a bit of, um, you know, numerics in there. But this logo can change and I made it separate so that we can have different t-shirt colors as well. There will also be different t-shirt shapes. But that will all exist on the t-shirt layer. So each one of these layers are going to be actual layers in the NFT that we create. So keep it in mind when you design. Next, I made a layer and just drew the eyebrows up there. I then followed it with the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and then the eyewear. This is kind of our base. I could call it our creation, our alien figure. And I'm going to maybe call this collection the alien nerds or the alienated nerds. And the reason why I use this term alienated is because doing code is alien to other people. Being a coder is kind of magical in a way. And I want to kind of elaborate and express that feeling through these NFTs. So it would be pretty unique owning one, especially if you were a coder. But if you're an investor, Maybe it's a good idea too. <laughs> um, and then you put your attributes, such as your eyewear, your headwear, and you can expand whatever you want to do. Remember, this is your canvas and you can create whichever um, artwork you want to. I just want to mention something, especially with the eyewear and the ears over here. Seeing that our base includes the ear, so if I switch it on and off, you'll see that the base includes the ear shape. That's why the, the eyewears goes, it looks like it goes behind the ear, but in reality it doesn't. If I move the eyeglasses away, you can see that it's cut, but it's cut at an angle that makes it look like it's behind the ear, and that's something you have to take in consideration when you do these attributes. Make sure they make sense on the parts that they overflow, and also make sure that they're not going to overlap a few things. So for instance, if I drew this eyewear and I extended it to here maybe, um, it technically would make sense, but it, it kind of would look like it's cutting through the ear if I didn't take that into consideration. That's just an example of something to look out for. The rest is simple and very straightforward. For instance, the headwear. It's easy to draw headwear and make it end there and you can just take it up and make it come around. This makes it look like there's something around the um, creature's face, right? And that's pretty cool. So that's what I did with this headwear, these headphones that's um, in grayscale. It looks like it's wrapping around. And that's exactly what you need to think about when designing your NFTs. The next thing I want to show you um, when you've designed your NFT and your character, and by the way, this is what I exactly what I do. 
I design the full character on how I would like the first character to look. Then I do the exact same. I go and I save this character and I do exactly the same doing the base character with different features, different shirts, different logos on the t-shirt and, and whatever. But then I save it as the second character. And I make about 10 different characters like these before I actually export all the layers and then put them into the program that mixes it all up and creates new characters. That being said, I'm going to show you an easy way in Photoshop how to export files from these layers. So what you can do is when you are happy with all your layers, you have to deselect the ones that you don't want. I'm just going to purely remove the background. Well, I can just unhide it over there and just leave the character itself. And then what you need to do is head over to the top tabs and click on File, Export, and then Export uh, Layers to Files. This pop-up will show, show up for, your, for you as well. And then what you can do is the first thing you need to select a destination. So we're just going to say the desktop, the layers file. And then inside the layers file, what we want to do is give it a prefix or not. I'm just going to prefix it with the underscore. It doesn't really matter because we are going to rename them anyway. You want to make sure that the visible layers only is ticked on. And the reason for that is sometimes you have layers that you don't want to be exported. For file type, choose PNG 24. It just gives you a higher grade um, quality PNG. Then you can leave this include ICC profile on and then make sure that trim layers is selected off. We want to export an image that's exactly a, a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Or if your image is landscape or portrait, you want the image to export it in that size. And that's why we don't want to trim the layers. Transparency, leave that ticked on and click on run. You'll see that the individual layers start exporting and once it's done, you can actually go and open the file and verify that all the different layers are there. This was now very easy, but the hard part is to actually design all the rest of the elements. Once the rest of the elements are designed, you can create folders for them, separating them in each layer. So for instance, we would have headwear, we would have another folder called maybe eyewear, and so on. You would create a folder for each of these layers, because remember, this is only one character. The next character will also have a bunch of layers like these, which we then need to drop into each of these folders. This headwear image is underscore 000 headwear, which doesn't make sense at the moment. We want to give it a more descriptive name and the attribute name that it's going to hold. So if we look at this, I would most probably rename this to headphone and then drop it in the headwear folder and do that for each of these files. I hope you guys have learned a little bit about Photoshop and exporting and also see how you can design. I didn't focus on the design part because this is not a design tutorial and also not everyone has Photoshop. I just wanted to explain the basic principle of separating these layers and taking in consideration things like hiding certain layers behind certain uh, properties of your character or your NFT. We're going to explore this a bit further in a later video, but for now, this is all I want you to know. And in the next video, I will have all the assets created and we are going to use this repo over here in the Hashlips repository, the open source V3, we're going to clone this repo and add in all of our elements so that our program can generate the random NFTs with rare attributes. And it's going to be awesome. So I've spent some time actually creating all the different characters that I foresee being in this collection. Now, these are the base characters. And when I say I've pre-designed them, I mean the base characters. So I took this collection from a standpoint of first creating each individual themed character before I put it in the program to mix it up. You can see we have the nice code over there. If we scroll a bit down, I've also got a Zen-like coder, then this coder with the long nose. 
um, an alien coda, a quite scary looking coda, and a zombie coda, as well as this nerdy, um, I'm going to call them nerdy coda clones, but this is a vampire. Now, each one of these have attributes that are split up, exported, and placed into layers. Here you can see an example. So I've got the body, the eyebrows, the eyes, and eyewear, and just if I open something like the headwear, like I mentioned, we get stuff like alien headset, the beanie, birds, brains, headphones, and obviously a nun for if we want to uh, display nothing. Then we also have a tattoo and a zombie hat. Now this is quite enough items to create a collection of at about a thousand NFTs. And I want to keep it small. I want to keep it very rare and exclusive. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And I just wanted to show the final uh, folder before we go and take it into the code. What I will end up doing maybe is change this shirt layer to maybe something like clothing. And the reason for that is because I've got alien suit, I've got a hoodie, I've got a purple shirt and then a vampire cloak which doesn't really fit with shirt so maybe this will be clothing and that would be the clothing logo but that being said all these layers work well with each other and now we're going to clone the repo and place these layers inside the program that will make the new nfts